In this example, we have a device that is composed of a mass m and two springs of constant equals 2k. The system has no damping. The device is placed over a moving platform that has a velocity of v sub zero, and we like to determine the amplitude of the response of the device if the platform has an amplitude of y sub zero and the wavelength is two pi. We see that the period will be the distance over the velocity. Therefore, we can say that the frequency of that wave will be 2 pi over that period, therefore, will be equal to the velocity. The function that describes the motion of the platform is equal to the sinusoidal function between 0 and the period of the sinusoidal function, but after that, we have no function is equal to 0. So we like to find the response while the device is passing through the moving platform and once is over the sinusoidal wave. The governing equation for this system will be equals to the mass times acceleration plus 2k, which are two springs in parallel, times the displacement equals to k times the displacement of the base. Therefore, the load applied to this system is equivalent to k y dt being y dt this function right here since this is a this y function we will use the integral of convolution and we will have to divide the solution in two parts for t less than the period of the function and for t greater than the period of the function for the first solution we will apply only this function and for the second we have to use for 0 to t this function and from t which is the period to a general time that we have 0 as the applied force therefore this integral is equals to 0. Let's solve first the integral of convolution for the time less than the period in which case we have to integrate the function which is the sinusoidal wave times the sine of omega t times t minus tau that comes from the response of the impulse, that comes from the integral of convolution. To integrate two sine functions, we will use the following trigonometric identities, the cosine of a plus b and the cosine of a minus b. If we expand those trigonometric identities and we subtract them, we get that this is equals to 2 sine of a times sine of b. If we name a our first variable, which is v sub 0 tau, and b omega n t minus tau, we get this expression right here. We will substitute then our multiplication of two sine functions by the subtraction of two cosine functions. We get this integral right here when now it's very easy to integrate because this is the integral of a cosine is a sine and the integral of this cosine is another sine. And we have to remember to divide by the internal derivative. In this case, it's v sub zero plus, because we have minus times minus omega n, and in this case, it's v sub zero minus omega n. And we have to evaluate the integral in our limits of integration, which is zero to t. Let's evaluate the limits of integration in the next slide. Let's now evaluate our limits of integration. We have to substitute all our taus first by t minus by all the taus evaluated at zero. We get four terms. There are these two terms evaluated first at t, which is t, t minus t, t, t minus t, and then the two terms evaluated at zero. We get these four terms that we can actually to get the same denominator and be able to add them together, and we get the same denominator, we can add them all together, and finally we get this response right here for t greater than zero and less than the period. 
Now let's do the response for t greater than the period. So we have that the system has passed to the sinusoidal wave and therefore we have to integrate that function from zero to the period and then from the period to a general time we have zero function but this integral will be zero. We will integrate this expression in a very similar way as we did in the previous slide converting these two sine functions into the subtraction of two cosine functions. And then we integrate those cosine functions and we get sine functions. So this is very similar to the previous slide. What it changes is the limit of integration. Right now we are not integrating between zero and a general time. We are integrating in between zero and the period of this function. So we substitute our limits of integration and then and we do the necessary algebra to simplify the expression and we get our response right here for time greater than the period. This demonstrates that even though we have no function, the function is equal to zero after the sinusoidal wave, we still have an answer because it's the effect of having had that perturbation. It's like when you go with a car and go over a bump. After the bump is gone, you still have a response of the system. Remember that this is the response of the particular solution and we always have to add the homogeneous solution that is a function of the initial conditions.